Hello. I'm Ricky Gervais. The English biologist Thomas Huxley once wrote, To a person uninstructed in natural history, his country or seaside stroll is a walk through a gallery filled with wonderful works of art, nine-tenths of which have their faces turned to the wall. Teach him something of natural history, and you place in his hands a catalogue of those which are worth turning around. To some, the wonders and intricacies of the natural world are a miracle, living proof of the existence of God. To others, the natural world is a wondrous illustration of Darwinian evolution. To discuss the complexities of plant and animal life, I'm joined by Stephen Merchant, graduate of the University of Warwick and award-winning writer. Thank you so much for having me. And Carl Pilkington, a man with no qualifications, very little education, but who is now known the world over as a man with a head like a fucking orange. All right. Natural history obviously takes in everything to do with animals, plants, bacteria, which are in neither group. Um, I should start by just saying, Carl, that the natural world is so diverse that we don't even know how many species there are. Conservatively, there's two million species of animals. I mean, without even taking in plant life, there are at least two million species of animal. With plants and animals, there could be up to ten million species. Um, there are 37,000 different species of spider alone. What do you think of that? Uh, it's a lot. It is, isn't it? A lot. But if, if, if there's loads of stuff out there that we don't know about, and we don't know what it's doing, is it that important? Is it worth finding them now? Well, yeah. Why? Well, it may give us the key to unlock other mysteries. A spider won't. Well, it might do. A spider won't be unlocking well, any that, mysteries. Well, that's, that's totally... Plants are different. I, th I reckon no, there's a natural no, cause, cure for everything no, out there. because there's loads, there's loads of animals that have toxins that, uh, are used in medicine. Yeah, I know that we use dangerous spiders to get rid of headaches or whatever, or they do in the tribes, right? Yeah, Do you want to just we... expand on that point? Um, it's just, uh, that's what they do in tribes. Who's they've got they? all natural, all these tribes, they've got, they've got all natural remedies. They, you know, they go, what, what's up with you? You got a sore ankle, chew on this twig. And it works. I've seen it. They, they sent women out there and like, they couldn't believe the stuff they can do with twigs and trees and hedgehogs and stuff. Mm. So it wasn't say, an in-depth analysis, was no. it? What I'm saying- Women, they just sent some women out there. <laughs> well, they, 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 <laughs> apparently. Yeah. yeah. I mm. reckon the, the stuff that's got venom in it, that's useful. Mm. We probably know about all them. Because it's, mean, it doesn't make any sense, we right, probably know about all of them. What, what I mean is the police know about the gangsters. But right. they go, right, we're aware of them, right. let them get on with it. We'll keep our eye on them. And it's the same in the jungle. The spiders, the deadly ones you're aware of, the ones that are just pottering about, you go, don't even worry about them, don't even give them a name. They're not doing anything. <laughs> but what if there's another poisonous spider they haven't identified yet, that lurking in the undergrowth? I'd be very surprised. So but you'd be very surprised? I'd be surprised if there was something- It sounds like laziness on your part. But they're discovering new species all the time. We know about all the dangerous stuff now. Because we have to, we live no, in a world now. We do, we know about a lot of the dangerous stuff. Whenever they find something new now, it's like a well, new look, butterfly or- Well no, well no, look at AIDS. What? When I was a kid, I'd, no one had ever heard of AIDS. Yeah, but that's not a natural thing, is it? That's not like a spider or- What do you mean a, it's like, not a natural neighbor. thing? It's not, a, it's not a natural thing, it's not something that's- AIDS hasn't been like living under the soil for millions of years going, I'll wait till the 1980s and I'll come out and kill a load of people. No, but it is a natural thing. It's a new thing. thing. Yeah, it's new. Yeah, but loads of animals are new, aren't they? Not in, not, I mean, it, uh, evolutionary terms, there's new animals I'm in sure, evolution. I'm sure there's new stuff deep down that's just like, almost like bacteria, sat under the soil, it'll never come to the top. Right? It's like having, having an old woman who's a neighbour. She never goes out, she doesn't bother you. Let her be. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, but, but what if that old neighbour could unlock the secrets to- I don't think she can. Just to, even to us understanding the, the complexities of the universe, of the way things have developed and grown. Because we know about it. Well, why would we know about it? Because I never understand why is it you want to stop researching and studying now? Why is it that you're happy to, to to just draw a line under everything else? What if people had said this back in the 19th century? We've done this. We've done this. I think someone in the 1900s we uh, said everything that's going to be invented has been invented, and and then look what happened in that century. Yeah, and I've said to you, look at the stuff that is being invented now. 
the frisbee and stuff like that. It's all, <laughs> it's all, <laughs> it's all stuff that, right. that you kind of go, it's all right, it's a good idea, but it, we don't need yeah, it. Yeah, but the frisbee wasn't being worked on by the top brains of our generation. That was some novelty toy that some manufacturer made. Yeah, but it's like, look at the fuss we made over that fella who came up with a Dyson vac. Everyone was like, he's up there with Einstein. Well, he's not. Uh, it's a good vac. It cleans up floors well and everything. Who said he's up there with <laughs> Einstein? In one, PR of, people in one of those programs where they did like great inventions of our time, it was easy early on. You go, Einstein, you know, Newton did this, Archimedes, Dyson. <laughs> and that's, and they, they started to run out because it is harder to come up with something new now. Because everything that's needed, remember, the things we've invented are things that we sort of go, we could do with that. Inventors don't sit there going, what can I make? Oh, I need a toaster. They've sat there, they've burnt the toast under the grill and they've gone, I need some sort of device here. Well, somebody, yeah, 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 yeah. And what can it do? I'll Necessity like that, is the mother of invention. Yeah. However, there are, uh, uh, people who sit around going, wh where's a, you know, a loophole in the market? Where's a little, where's well, a niche? Well, here's something. About what? a year ago, I came up with a see-through toaster. So that you can see how much the toast is cooked. Right. I found it about two months after that. Someone had done it. Right. So I've just been beaten to the post. Yeah, but all you're really doing, Carl, is That's modifying that. an existing invention. What, 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 what other examples are being pipped at the post, well, are they? Uh, it's got to be one that hasn't been done. Or it's not your theory. But, but also what? something that unlocks a mystery. Or helps the world. What's causing problems in the world at the moment that needs sorting? Well, oh, cures for things. Uh, Faster transport, uh, to, to anything to do with security, anything to do with well-being. I know? mean, obviously, environmental concerns are a big issue. People trying to design automobiles that Fuel. can run on different yeah. alternative fuels. I met a bloke on a conference once who sent a drawing to Blue Peter. It was their design a car of the future, and he sent them a drawing that was a car, and the only innovation was that you can have a shit while driving. <laughs> and then it, he put, he put shit goes down pipe, which becomes fuel. They must have looked at that and gone, what a mania. I think that's a brilliant, I mean, I've driven a long way. I drove to Cornwall recently and I would have loved But I think he did it when he was about nine seat. and he must have thought, oh, I'm being driven to school. Oh, I need the toilet. Wouldn't it be good? But why hasn't, why hasn't that been done? What? Well, like Steve says, I've been in the same situation when you're driving and you go, oh, where's the service station? You see a sign saying 36 miles. So what would you say? So you suggest pull your trousers down and shit down in the seat that's a toilet. Yeah, well, what's wrong with that? Well, you've got your nan in your back. She's got one as well. So you are going to call and we're all shitting. <laughs> well, not all the time, but it's, it's, it's more useful to me than a lighter. So also, what, at Where what do you point wash do you wa wa wash your hands or yeah. wipe your arse? At what point does that occur? Well, at the end a of the journey. <laughs> Oh God! So you get in, you have a shit at Deptford, and you wipe your ass at uh, Pole Perro. Yeah, but like I've said to you, this isn't like just people going, "Oh, I think I'll have one." You need one, not really. There's something to do, isn't it? I'm sick of playing I Spy. I'm having a shit. You have it when you really need one. When you have to pull off a motorway, it's a lot of messing about. There's probably going to be a queue at the toilet. No more queues at toilets. Ten minutes, Rick. That takes, doesn't it? Ten no, minutes yeah. to pull Ten off, minutes. have a quick shit. Driving along. Just, it's just going on. It's just going on. Don't even know about it. Radio's on. Everyone's happy. Doesn't matter. I don't know. I mean, we all do it as well. That's the thing. Anything else you'd uh, come up with? I mean, so far you've come up with nothing. That was a, a, a nine-year-old boy's idea. <laughs> I mean, the Breville maker wasn't needed. <laughs> That's true. That's What's the Breville maker? <laughs> like toasted sandwiches. <laughs> There's so many things, chocolate fountains, anything like that. I just go, what are these? Who's invented these? Who's okayed this idea? And yet I can't have a shit on the motorway. <laughs> <laughs> Think of computers. What about them? Well, I mean, that's in the in the last few years, you know, uh, you know, a hundred years in our existence, okay. They've been dabbling with anything even close to a computer. No, nothing before that. Yeah, c computers are a good thing, and it baffles me as to how they came about. When you think a, a computer chip is just made out of sand, now for someone to come up with that, you go, this, "There must have been some sort of alien involved here." What do you mean? Why <laughs> do you think that? <laughs> so I love it. So the frisbee rubbish. Anything too clever? Well, it wasn't an invention. It was an alien. <laughs> 
So there's nothing between frisbee and computer <laughs> chip? What I'm saying is, it's not even an idea, is it? What do you mean? A computer chip? Where's that come from? Oh, it's amazing. Well, that, it's it, astounding, yeah. So well, you think it was an alien? <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> great! Because <laughs> I, I can't believe that someone would go, right, I want to make something that will hold information and be able to do- I know, let's use some sand, we've got loads of that. You, you'd go, what, you, you don't- Well, that's what genius is, though, but isn't Carl, it? there's no alien involved. No, but when I say alien, I don't mean an alien came down here and said, you know, oh, do you want to buy this? There could have been, <laughs> yeah. uh, a, a spaceship, uh, crash, right? Right, yeah. And th there's all them rumours, isn't they, in that anger. They've got the spaceship, they take it apart, they go, yeah, wheels, we've got them, yeah, 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 steering wheel, yeah. And then they go, hang on, what's this here? And they find the chips, and they break it down, and they find Carl, the sand. but that as an explanation to human genius is nearly as ridiculous as the Adam and Eve explaining, uh, life on Earth. Uh, how could you tell that to someone without going red? I mean, I always worry about that, where people, like people who believe in Adam and Eve, don't they wish there was a slightly better explanation? With all the evidence but, we've but, got, but do you know what I mean? With all the evidence for evolution, what? that they think the Earth is 5,000 years old, and God made Adam out of some dust, and then he went, oh, I need a bird. It's alright, I'll make it out of your rib. But, he's had a call. He had a call recently from a film company asking him if he's got any ideas for movies. Now, how desperate, how, in what dire straits must the British film industry be that they're going, well, they're turning to cover, yeah. yeah, we need Carl Pilkerton. We have hit rock bottom. And he went along for an interview. So what, and you went in and you... I went, I went along and, um, had a meeting, uh, in a cafe. And, uh, they just said, right, you know, got any ideas? And, uh, sort of said, you know, what, what are you thinking? What sort of thing are you after? Are you after action? Thriller? Whatever. Because uh, you can provide any of it. I love that, that he's playing it cool, like <laughs> you've come to the right person. <laughs> yeah, 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 My yeah. time's precious, what do you need? Yeah. Yeah, I'm Carl Pilkerton, yeah, yeah, they, uh, they, they call me the movie doctor, what do you need, <laughs> Papa? So, thought of this idea, sort of, on the spot. Good. That always buy Um, no, but sometimes that's how good ideas come up, don't yeah. they? Just, just So a lot of yours have come up, yeah. No, but when, if you just Randomly. talk, I find that your mouth, comes out with stuff. <laughs> <laughs> right, there's another right, quote. Right. There's another quote. That, <laughs> if you talk, that, your mouth comes out with that, stuff. That, that to me, is, stands along with what were those things in Gremlins called? Does your brain rule you or do you rule your brain? No, but what uh, I mean, you, if you sit there and try and use your brain to do it, right. it doesn't work the same. Just just keep talking, just keep your, keep your mouth talking and eventually it will come out with something pretty good. That is exactly what Plato said. So, uh, so, so anyway. Aristotle, he said, sit down, I've got an idea for you. Uh, Aristotle said, play it hard, what you go, right, just keep talking and eventually your brain will come out with stuff. So what I thought, I just started off by saying, like, actors' names and that, who I thought should be in it, because then that's giving, giving more, it's building. Right, okay, so who did you say? Who did you say? So I said, right, I'm seeing, uh, Clive Warren. Who the fuck's Clive Warren? Who's Clive Warren? The one who was in Closer. Clive Owen. Clive Owen. Right, alright. Did they look at you like you're a fucking Clive. idiot? Well, I <laughs> so they, they all started trying to figure out, who's this Clive Warren we've not heard about? We, uh, he, he must be amazing. Yeah, he's Clive Warren, get me Clive Warren <laughs> on the phone. Who's get Clive me Warren. Clive Warren. And I said, uh, Rebecca de Mornay, right? <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, where did that come she from? She hasn't been in a film uh, for 15 years, has she? Clive Warren and Rebecca de Mornay. <laughs> I love this <laughs> bit. You know. They thought he was a genius. They thought he was an absolute nigga. Like, we've never thought of putting Clive Warren with Rebecca de Mornay. <laughs> but hang on a minute, you could have. <laughs> You can have oh any God. film star, this is your fantasy <laughs> casting, yeah, yeah. and you choose a bloke that doesn't exist, and a woman who hasn't been on TV or in a film for ten years. <laughs> oh God! Why didn't oh. you choose a, like, you know, a... Someone a who existed. Jayla or someone who's a oh. big star. Oh God! Clive! <laughs> good morning! Clive Warren! <laughs> oh God! Oh so God! So anyway, so they're going, yeah, and what happens is, they're going out, and uh, together and that. Yeah, Clive Warren and Rebecca yeah. Warren. I said, it's one of them where it starts off and the people, you know, you, you're seeing into their lives from yeah. like the morning. Yeah. So it's like a nice sunny day. Yeah. Radio's on. Um, you know, they're going about the day, they're having the breakfast, they're saying, oh, what are we doing tonight? They're planning a big do that night and stuff. And you're thinking, oh, they've got a nice life. Mm. She, she's like, love you and all that, yeah. He walks out the house, gets hit by a bus. Oh. So Clive Warren's dead, dead right? Yeah. Now, what happens is, 
She's devastated, Rebecca. I don't know if Clive Warren will take that part. Because he ain't got much to do, has no, he? No, I don't. If I, if, I, if I know Clive Warren... And I think you do. I think I do. Um, he's gonna say... Now, hold on, though. There's more, isn't there? I've... I've Have you jumped the gun there, Rick? Go on, mate. Well, tell it, carry on. So he, he's hit by a bus, so he's so dead. So he's hit by a bus and that. The title's come up. Oh, It's okay. got you, right? She's Starring devastated. She's, Clive she's Warren. fed up. She's devastated and that. Um, doctor says... Clive's dead. Um, and that, who's playing the Doctor? Jack Nicholson House. Um, sort of, uh, what's that fella who was in Independence Day? Um, Will Smythe? <laughs> no, the, the, the old, the old black fella. Um, uh, Morgan Freeman. Yeah. Yeah. Get him in. He's Morgan Freeman, yeah. <laughs> yeah. He says, your husband's dead. Right. She's like, oh, God. What happens then is, he says, but listen, what we can do now, we can take the brain out. Right. Right. And, and and a fact that I'd read that day before the meeting, this isn't in the film now, this is me. Right, but right. lucky, yeah, okay. luckily. I read a fact. thing about how the brain can, it can run on half of it. Yeah. You've actually got a full brain. Yeah. You can Some run it on half. half. You can yeah. run it on half. Right. Yeah. So, this is, this was in my mind still, so mm. I thought I'll get that in. Well, half your mind, yeah. So, I said, what happens is, Morgan Freeman says, been working on this, you can run, you can run your life on half a brain. Right. She's sort of a bit like, what are you telling me this for now? My, my husband's just died like 20 minutes ago. Yeah. And he goes, yeah, but if we're going to do this, we've got to act quick. She's like, do what? He said, I'll tell you. He says, we can, whilst his brain's not fully dead, because it, it stays awake for a bit when you've oh, been killed. Oh, he's not dead then, fine. No, no, but Wait, he is. Wait, he comes alive. What he do you is, mean? <laughs> he is, but they found out that right. it stays awake a little bit. No, 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 no. So, no, no. he's gone. No, no, no. He's hit by a bus. Yeah, no, he's dead. dead. If the brain's dead, you are dead. Clive Warren's dead. And if, if, uh, if the brain's not dead, you're not dead. No, but it's like people in a coma. They're dead, aren't they? But no, the no, no, dead. no, no, they're in a coma. No, they're, they're in a coma. No, they come out of a coma. All right, then he's in a coma. He's been hit by the bus, but the chances are he's not going to come out of that coma, but his brain is still awake. Right, okay. So, change that. That's easily done. Uh, hold on, though. I, I like this fact that he's in a coma, so they're going, look, he's definitely gonna die in this coma. Take the brain out now. Pop the brain out. But why is that such a weird thing when that's what they do now? That's what they do now. What is? That's what they do. What? They do that. What? 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 what, what, what a brain transplant. No, but when, like, how, how I've signed that donor card, yeah. Right, if anything happens to me, no, 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 no. there's the no lot. such thing as a brain donor. Oh, we've explained to you before. Yeah, but they're working on it. They've said something about Einstein. They, they, they messed about with his brain for ages, trying to work out if it was full of stuff. That's what they're doing. They're working on that. There's loads of things that doctors are doing that we don't know about. I've seen some weird stuff on the internet. <laughs> yeah, I know you have. Yeah. I saw a program on Channel Five where a monkey brain was still alive and it was stuck on a stick. <laughs> And they, they you were watching it. the magic roundabout. They poked it and it reacted. Right. So it's still alive. It's being kept alive, and it's only a matter of time. What's what's the brain linked up to? The as long as you can up. link it up to the eyes, and somehow so it can tell the arms and legs what to do. You're laughing. I love that. As, imagine a, a team full of doctors going. Well, we're going to try and do a brain. Like Carl, right? Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to be quick because I've got to get back. Uh, my cousin's fixing my boiler. Um, as long as you can link this up to the eyes and tell the arms and legs what to do, we're laughing. <laughs> Cheers, Carl. See you later. Then what happens is they say, "Do you want half of his brain in your head?" Half she, of his brain. She in says, her head. "She says definitely not. I'm having you struck off." She starts screaming. She calls the police. He gets arrested. Yeah, but you'd have said that years ago when people can have like someone else's arm put on their body and stuff. <laughs> yeah, but he's only in a coma. Yeah. No, but he's not going to come out of that co coma. Right. So, so it's like this or nothing. He's right. like, look, you know what? What we're going to do here? We can either turn the switch off, yeah. or we can put his head in your head. But why would? But you, so, why so what he does? So what they do then? They're going to take half his brain. Half of his brain. Take out half of hers. Pop it in place. Why would she do that? Because she loves him. But hold on, but no, no, wait, 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 wait. What would she then be? Because this is what I'm trying to tell okay, you. Okay, okay, sorry. What happens is, he, he explains all this, so I mean this would probably cover about 20 minutes in the film, but I'm just rushing I, it, I'm I just rushing switched it off, now. but yeah. <laughs> no, you wasn't, this, this bit would have you. Mm. So what- Well I'd have actually left when I, I wouldn't even gone in to see a film starring uh, Clive Warren and Rebecca de Mornay. <laughs> unless, <laughs> unless it was 1985. <laughs> so, so the thing is, <laughs> She's the same as you. She says the same thing. She goes, why would I do that, Doctor? Mm. And uh, he goes, well, what will happen is, he's gone, but you'll you'll have his thoughts. 
So in the morning when you say, oh, I don't know what to have, well, they have cornflakes, is better the brain will sort of say- Have a wheat bit. Have shredded wheat yeah. or whatever. And she's like, oh yeah, good idea. Sorry, sorry, so the point of this film <laughs> is that the dead man can remind her what <laughs> breakfast cereal she likes. Yeah. So the thought- What do you mean yes? So that's it, is it? No, 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 that's not the only wait, thing. Wait, oh wait, I mean, this is only act that's, one. That's just the first bit, everything's going well, she so, has it done. So what is, what, who is she? Is she herself? She's Rebecca Nimone, yeah. but, but now with and again, with, with, with him chipping in with a bit of voiceover. So, so the idea is it's all going well at the beginning, and she's- So she can't decide what so, so to wear, she's got, he, So she's had half of her brain taken out and put in a bin, yeah. okay, and, and Clive Warren's, uh, half has been put in there. So now she's walking round, okay. So yeah. she's like a, she's schizophrenic. Or, um, oh no, no, well, it's okay, no, it's okay though, cause the bit they put in of Clive Warren's brain is actually, it remembers doing a coma. So oh, there's yeah. nothing happening anyway, don't worry about it. No, no, so no. all she's got is half a brain. No, like I say, the brain is alive, so it's all going well when she leaves hospital. Yeah. And she gets the first taste of it, and it's a bit weird to get hold of, cause she's, she's sort of, uh, I think when she signs herself out, he's sort of fighting, right, in his name and stuff, so there's a few sort of technical things that, yeah. that she has to get used to. And does he, does Clive's brain what know does he that think? he's now inside her brain? Um. Does that matter? Well, I would say it matters because yes. otherwise- Yes, it, it does matter, Carl. What's, what's, what's he thinking? Can, I mean, what's what the I mean point of this? Why has she gone along with this? Because she really loves him. But what, but what's in it for him? What does she think- Well, say if I died yeah. and Suzanne said, go on, I'll have half of Carl's, right? She would wake up in the morning to a thought of me sort of going, oh, you never guess what I just thought about or whatever, I'd still be there. But she it's wouldn't physical, ever do that. Isn't it? The rest of the, the the rest of your body is sort of waste, isn't it? But People Carl, like the rest it. of your body is sort of waste. No, it is kind of. If when when someone dies, it's yeah. not that person anymore, is it? They're still there physically. Yeah. But you go, you can't have a chat with them. So if you could have someone's brain in your head when they're dead, you'd have it, wouldn't you? What are you talking about? Why would I have someone's brain in my head when they're dead? Well, what I've got a perfectly good brain. Yeah. So, but, but like I said, you're running on half. So I've- Who's I've running on half? So you're telling me you wouldn't have it done then? <laughs> uh, 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 of course I fucking wouldn't! I, I can also I... categorically state I wouldn't know Yeah, either. but you're saying that now, but once you're in that position that someone who, you know, you're loving that dies, if the doctor said, do you want it? No! And I'd go, no! It's madness! I don't think you- It's wait. madness! Alright, 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 let me just ask this as a question, even if we accept this as a possibility. Does- if- if Clive Warren doesn't know <laughs> that he's in Rebecca's brain, their love and the conversations they used to have and what would- the connection between them is gonna be absent because she's gonna be talking to him and he's just gonna be going, I don't know, shredded wheat. It's all thought. She doesn't have to so talk. So they're not talking to one another. Well they are, but not out loud. She's not walking down the corridor going, what do you think, Clive? And, right. And he's saying shredded wheat. It's just- it's happening. Right. But so how is this dramatically so they're shown so on screen? Do we hear those So voices? now they've yeah, got- you hear the voices. You hear the voices? You hear the voices. So tell so me anyway. a bit- tell me a typical bit of dialogue. Um, well we've done the breakfast scene. <laughs> yeah, that, that okay, was yeah. dynamite. Yeah. That's fucking Oscar winning. Yeah, let's do- can we do lunch? Um, there may be like at the funeral, cause even though the brain's still alive, they still have the funeral and you can have like a funny bit where they stood around the grave and like there's some relation there who he doesn't like and she can start laughing and the family are looking at her going, why is she laughing? Yeah. And she's sort of laughing and he's saying something a bit rude going, look at her head. Do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Like Stuff on the orange. family. Yeah. <laughs> Little cameo for you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And uh, yeah. so you have all that and people are sort of liking the film thinking, oh, it's quite funny this. Mm. Yeah. And yeah. then you hit them hard. <laughs> the eight people that have gone to see him. <laughs> yeah. We reckon them all in her family. <laughs> yeah. Clive Warren's three mates. All right, Clive. I didn't know you were a film star. <laughs> no, I was working in a garage yesterday. Yeah, I was fixing boilers. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, this is where you get them. It's the most, oh, it is the most ludicrous idea for film I've ever heard. All right, it's, all right, the, it's the maddest. It's the, honestly, it really is the ramblings of a I mental have to case. Say, though, right, it, I have to say though, I am hooked now. I want to know what's going to happen next in the story. Oh Christ! Remember, I was making all this up. <laughs> it's not based on a true story then. <laughs> <laughs> Remember, imagine if he said that in a meeting. Remember, I'm making all this up and they go, all yeah. oh, right. Oh, okay. Oh, I thought, I thought, oh. oh. So the meeting's still going on. They haven't left at this point. No, no, they, they were sort of going, oh, right, yeah. But what annoying- Check right. please. Check the, please. The fancy annoying thing, it was like, I just wondered whether this is what they do just so they can have a cake every day at four o'clock because <laughs> it was odd. I can't imagine Spielberg sort of nipping down to Costa Coffee to discuss <laughs> E.T. <laughs> 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 so 
So, uh, so I said, so oh I said, God. right. So this is where you get them. You've got everyone laughing, and that's mm. what it's all about with a film, isn't it? It's emotions, yeah. messing with people's emotions, and that. Yeah, yeah. So they like that. They were like, yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. So, oh, oh, yeah. That's and there you go again. That's oh, me. new outlook to filmmaking. That's mm. me. That's me. Mouth coming out with stuff that even I didn't know I knew. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> so, so then I said, um, I said, right. Then what happens is, <laughs> she hears the voice go, Leslie, where are you? Something. Right. Her name's not Leslie. No. No. So she's thinking, who's Leslie? Yeah. So in her mind, she's going, who's Leslie? <laughs> he's going, oh. He, she, so he's, he's thought, hang on, I've let something slip. I've here. let something slip, so she's going, answer me. Oh. He goes quiet on her. Oh. Yeah. So. He's, so, he was having an affair. This is, this is the thing, so she's trying to hunt down. Leslie. Leslie. And he's got to stop her thinking it. Then what happens is, I mean, you know. Where are your backs? So he's got to hunt down Leslie. So he's got, she's got to hunt down mm. Leslie. Right. And um, that that can fill about half an hour again. I'm not I love the sure. fact that you're doing it how far you've got through the film. <laughs> yeah, you've I'm got like, to yeah. fill up tw two hours, right? Do right. One more idea. We call it half hour. That's <laughs> the end of the film. See you later, <laughs> starring Clive Warren. So so nice to see Rebecca De Mornay again, wouldn't it? Yeah. <laughs> so Leslie, uh, so Leslie has got to be sort out. It's a woman, is it? Another Leslie, or it's is it another a bloke? woman? Right. But what happens is, I mean, without ruining the end for everyone. What would sort of happen is? <laughs> oh yeah, because we don't want to ruin it for them. Because this will yeah. be this will be filling the multiplexes in no yeah, time. Yeah, this film's oh, definitely going to oh, be made. This is definitely going to get made. Well, yeah. seriously, uh, isn't any f pick pick a massive Hollywood film and look at it on paper and go, that's a balmy idea. Casablanca. I haven't seen it. Okay. So what I'm saying is, what that's why they called on him as a movie yeah. expert. This is this is a different sort of love triangle. They've all got their own brains yeah. and legs and stuff, walking around, interacting normally. But, but that's just it. It's 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 the power of love, isn't it? In a way. Yeah. But sorry, I, I mean, I don't want to see. No, it's, it's the greatest love story ever told, set in the head. But listen, let's I just get to hang the on end. a sec, though, Carl. I don't. Yeah, you've got to tell us the end. I don't think you can let people no, come listening. On, come on, what's the end? Waiting for the film. Just let your mouth talk. Right. So what I said was, I said maybe because I wasn't sure about this end bit. I thought they, they might think it's daft or whatever. You're putting so yourself said, down. I, I imagine it's. Dynamite gone. I said maybe you could have something like this, and uh, they were there, sort of going, "Oh yeah, what, what's it going to be?" What's it gonna be? Yeah, well, he's come up with some great stuff at the moment. What yeah. happens is, his brain mm. is more powerful than hers. Right? How it, is now? What? How is there power? I don't. Why is there no power involved? It's got a stronger will. It's what I mean is, the brain. Mm. Her brain was running the rest of her body. Mm. Now he's his taking brain, over. His brain's just sat there, isn't it, thinking stuff. Right. Brilliant. So that's, that gets more powerful mm. and overrules her body. Okay. Yeah. She then fancies Leslie. So, so it's a lesbian hold on, film. this is building up to a lesbian <laughs> love, so what the, well, It's what? trendy, isn't it, that? So just have a bit of that at the end and- That, that is the worst idea I have ever heard for any piece of art. I mean, it's the wor- it would be the worst- it would be the worst TV show, worst book, wor worst everything. It's the worst idea. It's not the worst idea because as long as a film, as long as a film makes you think, but this doesn't make job. us think about anything. I'm thinking, who the fuck's Clive Warren? <laughs> so hold on. So he overpowers her, so she is now a lesbian. What's Leslie getting out of this? Why does Leslie think? Hold on. Why is why is my because dead lover's wife coming on to me? Because this is what I'm saying to you. He's R relationships, it's the love of two brains. Right, okay, again, can that's anyone out there, can line. we make that into it? That's a quote. The relationships is a love of two <laughs> brains. Well, it's now, he's got something there, he's got something yeah. there, but my point is this, why is Leslie suddenly turned lesbian? Because she loves the brain. But is she, does she know this is Clive Warren? Um. well, maybe, maybe now and again, Rebecca, or Clive says something. Rebecca will say something now and again, like, "Oh, I like me minge. <laughs> I like me, you know, me food done like this or whatever." And and it's all about say say cooked. if like I'm a food cook. <laughs> 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 Wait a minute, Clive Warren on this <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm in two minds about this bacon. Yeah, what, what I'm going to turn into a lesbian. People shredded wheat. People like what they like, and it's Ooh. the same way. Like I've said to you before, with someone who's been going out with a woman, and then is found out that she's got a twin sister, and they divorce that first twin and go out with the other twin. It's all the same. You're after the same thing, aren't you? Yes, but that when a cat dies, you buy another one. 
It's the same thing. You want that same. Yeah, but look you don't necessarily something. switch your sexual orientation. In the case of your twin scenario, they both look the same. Yeah. Has there, has there ever been one where um, it's a uh, twin boy and girl? Yeah, well, I was going out with her, but I mean, he looks a bit like her. Yeah. I loved boobs. Now I like cock. <laughs> well, this is your problem. You don't know anything. And this theory about if your mouth talks enough, the brain will kick in soon. It. All right. So I'm getting fifty pence a day for delivering papers. Mm. But I needed the energy. Right. Now if I- if I spent my 50p on a Mars bar- Yeah. 5p profit a day is not worth it. No. So, help yourself. I knew I was doing a no, good no, job no, for no, you. No, 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 so help yourself. <laughs> that doesn't, that, that doesn't follow. So help yourself. Get another job, <laughs> leave that job, negotiate a pay rise, not help myself. That doesn't, that doesn't go, that's ridiculous. Where does it stop? If you worked in a nuclear power plant, well, they're not paying me much. Have a little bit of uranium. <laughs> a lovely little bit of uranium. Yeah, yeah. I do. It's a, a strange analogy, Rick. It's a left straight from a bloke nicking stuff from work. So he works in a power plant, he's having himself a bit of uranium. What's he doing with the uranium? Well, you know, Mars a day and all that, and that's for energy, and so's uranium. <laughs> but more energy than a Mars bar. <laughs> yeah. I never nicked. I never nicked because I couldn't bear the shame. Even as a kid, I knew that was shameful. I want a clear conscience. I want to go to bed and, and sleep at night. And I do, Carl. I haven't got restless leg syndrome or people shouting out my window. So I sleep at night because I've got a clear conscience. And that, to me, is what guides me. Well, it's like when I first moved to London and I was travelling, when I was living in Oval, I was travelling across London all the way to Shepherd's Bush every day. That's a big, long, 45 minute, hour long journey. And uh, there was, there were not barriers at either end in those days. So I could get on the tube at one end and get off the other end and no one ever checked my ticket. And I was buying tickets every day for months and months and months and it was starting to seem to me weird. It's like, well, no one's ever checking this. So, of course, you know, got a little bit lazy. Maybe I stopped buying tickets occasionally, taking the trip back and forth, boom, 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 boom. And then for maybe a month, travelled without a ticket. And then I was coming up, kind of got a bit blasé, obviously, coming up in Oval Station. Someone steps up and says, excuse me, can I see a ticket? Uh, and that's terrible because oh. when you're in when you're in your mid twenties, it's not like a kid anymore. Oh, no. I mean, you are an adult. You've made a reasoned decision there. You can't plead ignorance. So, um, so I said, <clears throat> I'm sorry. Yeah, do you, can we see a ticket, please? I went, yeah, yeah. I was, I was looking through because I had, for some reason I used to keep a lot of old tickets. And I was looking through, pretending to look for my ticket. I went, oh, I don't know what's happened to it, but I did. I did actually. I bought one at Shepherd's Bush, um, and they went, okay. If we phone up Shepherd's Bush and there's no evidence of you buying a ticket, you can go to prison. I'm going to ask you again, have you got a ticket? No. Oh, no. no. I'm embarrassed. It was unbelievable. Being no, told off is worse. Right. It's worse, Well, it? it's because of people walking by and I'm being taught, told off by a woman who is at least a foot and a half shorter than me, wearing a uniform. And it was so embarrassing. It was so cripplingly embarrassing. Yeah. I'm going to ask you again, have you got a ticket? No, I haven't. No. So you lied? Yes, I did, yeah. Okay, we're gonna have to take your details. But honestly, being told- and that's it, it's the shame. Maybe it's a, a good bit of upbringing, unlike Carl, obviously, who's, you know, who's a man who's got no guilty conscience at all about the whole Mars bar incident, but whereas yeah. you and I, Rick, have raised, obviously, by better parents, yeah. and we, uh, <laughs> we are- it's been drummed into us, you know- How to, much to that train journey? <laughs> <laughs> Is, you know, we do feel that guilt, and that's maybe one of the reasons why we don't transgress. Like, and this is an interesting, you know, we talked earlier about the murder thing. Well, of course, there's that sort of uh, idea which has often been used in films. You know, in a godless universe, and if you do not feel guilt, what's to prevent you from committing a murder? If you can get away with it, if you could commit a murder, let's say you wanted to, and you could get away with it, there is no one to judge you in a godless universe, and you can live with the guilt, what's to stop you doing it? Well, I'd just like to say now, it is a godless universe. As an atheist, there is no God, and uh, uh, and I'm a, a good person, not because I'm going to get rewarded for it in heaven, because that's the way I want to live my life in a society that treats people like that. So, um, a lot of the laws of the land, um, not just in the country, in many countries, are from the Bible. I mean, that that's that kicked it off. I mean, there was laws before, obviously, and there were there were different gods before before this one. Um, was invented, um, but let's have a look at the Ten Commandments. Oh, yeah. I think that lays down most of the. Uh, a lot of them are good rules of thumb. You know, we've got to go along with them. They didn't. They certainly didn't invent those rules of thumb. I think that um, mankind were adhering to most of them before it was handed down. So uh, let's have a look at them. There's a website here, a Baptist um, Christian website forum, uh, and this guy. I sh maybe I shouldn't say his name. I mean, he's put it up there for public, but I, I don't want to 
embarrassing. He says, uh, brethren and sistren. <laughs> what? Yeah, so I don't know. Uh, Never heard that I've, I've learned a word. Yeah. Um, brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. Could have said, said, said that, but he's not. He's yeah. just a classic. He could have said people. Could have said people, could have said folks, say folks. Um, it has come to my attention that not only are many of our members unable to correctly recite all the Ten Commandments, it's probably a big problem. I don't know, he goes around testing them going, number three, <laughs> um, get out. <laughs> Go and learn it. But those who can remember, even a few, invariably get the sequence wrong. Is that important? Oh, well it is. He says, let me set the record straight. The commandments do not come in a random sequence, with the exception of seventh commandment, an obvious anomaly. Why? Well, he reckons that thou shalt not commit adultery at number seven should really be sixth in terms of severity. Let me explain. The commandments appear in order of severity. Right. The harsher the punishment, the closer to the top. I hope this handy colour chart will make the intrinsic beauty of God's word more comprehensible to all. So this is it, he's laid it out. Commandment, number one, thou shalt have no other gods before me. Okay? Alert level, severe. <laughs> Punishment, genocide. Whoa! Entire cities with men, women, children and animals must be killed. So that's a lovely, nice Christian view there. So um, if you worship another god yeah. before the right god he doesn't he doesn't name him by name he just uses the uh, <laughs> the term god sure. but there's only one according to um this genocide this, yeah anyone who worships another god genocide entire cities with men women children and animals must be killed i don't know what the animals have ever done but oh, uh, well, yeah okay punishment. so that's number one that's the that's the most severe worshiping the wrong god sure okay number two thou shalt not make unto thee any craven image. Okay, okay, no craven images. That's, uh, I assume, so druids, devil worshippers, anything like that, isn't it? Uh, well, I think it's also just, uh, I suppose it's kind of images that mock or degrade the Almighty. Okay. Uh, severe. What's the punishment there? Genocide. Genocide again. Um, he's, wow. oh, that's a, that's a, his favourite there. Genocide. Entire cities with men, women, children, and animals must be killed. What worries me is we're a couple of smart guys, and we're not entirely sure what that commandment means. No. So we could go, but we could accidentally. Yeah. Three. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord, thy God, in vain. Okay. Okay. Um, I, I assume God made these, did he? He's, he's used the first three talking about himself here. <laughs> alert level high. Capital punishment. Oh, so capital punishment. Just, so just, just, no, God. no, no. You're just gonna thank be God. Yeah, you're just gonna be put to death there. Not not all your friends and family and okay, dogs. Yeah. Sure. Um <laughs> leave the budgie. No. <laughs> Number four. Remember the Sabbath day. Keep it holy. Uh high. So uh, alert level high. High, yeah. Capital punishment. Death. Capital punishment again. Yeah, you forget for the, the holy for, day. Well what what makes me laugh is that sometimes you can be walking along and you go, Oh right, yeah, yeah, all right, I'm just going to, to oh, I keep thinking it's Monday. You what? <laughs> you forgot it's Sunday. <laughs> no, I just forgot <laughs> ah, death. <laughs> Number five. Honour thy father and thy mother. High. Okay, so and if you don't honour your mother, capital punishment. Capital punishment. A lot of death. Again. Lot of death. Again, at the moment. So, it? Yeah. so strict. Yeah, we haven't even got to thou shalt not kill yet, and yet he's killed everyone so far. Wow, jeez. Um, now seven, he's put a number six here. He's put them out of order six and seven because he thinks this is higher. Thou shalt not commit adultery. High capital punishment. Capital punishment again. Now the fellow who did this website, he uh, he's put thou shalt not commit adultery above thou shalt not kill. God, I did it the other way around. God, <laughs> thou shalt not kill, but this but fella, this, <laughs> yeah. I reckon his wife played away. Right, right, So he yeah. went, right, I'm putting them in a different order. Because before, let's see, number six, he's put, um, thou shalt not kill, alert level, elevated, capital punishment in some cases. So if you murder someone, you can sometimes be killed. If you commit adultery, always, always death. Always get killed. So uh, I think he's made th that he can have his wife <laughs> put to death, right? Or he could kill her, but maybe get off with it. Right. That's why right. he's done that. Um, number eight, thou shalt not steal, guarded, excessive fines. <laughs> Only in rare cases covered with punishment. Oh, just excessive fines? Yeah, excessive. Um, number nine, thou shalt not bear fault wit witness to thy neighbour. Uh, so basically lying low. Despisement and scorn. Is that the punishment? Yeah, for lying. Yeah, despisement, despisement and scorn. Despisement and scorn. Yeah. Thou shalt not covet, really. Don't 
Don't stuff. try and get stuff. Don't be jealous of stuff and try it's and punishment. get it. Despisement uh, and scorn. Despisement and scorn, sure. Yeah. 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 Now, at first, initially, he's annoyed. But his like, voice, oh, st- the Tom voice Cruise. is still the same as his was, even though it's got Tom Cruise's mouth. It's got a bit of both. A little bit different. Who's little doing bit. it? But, uh, okay, sorry, just practically, who is doing the voiceover then for the... It's Tom, now. So he's Tom's acting. sort of doing an impression of the, this actor. Brian. Brian's inside Tom. His yeah. name is Brian, but when you look at it on the telly, when the camera whooshes round, yeah, and you see him sat in his bed, it's Tom Cruise. Sure, right, okay. His girlfriend's over the moon because she loves Tom Cruise. Right, right. He's gutted because he couldn't stand him. He can't stand the films. He's thinking. Yeah, oh. but he must be thinking. I look like Tom Cruise, one of the most loved actors of his generation. Yeah, no, it, and he he's thinks so, but he's not because he's in shock. Remember, right. he was expecting to see himself, and when he looks in the mirror, yeah, he sees no, it must be else. shocking. Yeah. So also the voices. He's going. Really I can't stand this. And she's going, calm down, calm down, you'll get used to it. And I don't want to get used to it. And uh, she's sort of saying, look, you're alive. Right. Stop moaning. Yeah. Brian. Stop moaning, Brian. Um, she's calling him Brian, I assume. She says... And yeah. Tom Cruise just had a sort of donor card that allowed his body to be given away, did it? Yeah, it's the future. Right. This is, this is, this is 2013, Steve. <laughs> Things have changed. <laughs> Clearly. Right. But What's his girlfriend's name? Claire. Claire, Claire and Brian, okay, great, just a different body, just a slightly different look. All just right, like, so, yeah, right. he's seen that he looks like Tom Cruise, he's shocked, but he's getting used to it? He doesn't look like him, he is him. Okay, No, right. he's not him, he's Brian, isn't he? Yeah, but to most people, it's, yeah, yeah, when yeah, he, he leaves, when he leaves the hospital. They're going, all right, Tom, I thought you were there. They're all going, it's Tom, it's Tom, and he's going, really? oh, yeah, and he's going, oh, I knew this would happen, it's doing me heading. Are they a paparazzi? Do they, the paparazzi no, think it's Tom? No, no, no. No, Let no him pap- explain, sorry Rick, because okay, you so heard this, so I want to hear though. this story. This is weird though, because it, 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 so he looks like Tom Cruise. So he wheels out, he's in a wheelchair, Okay. he's going, I'm sick of this. Uh, the other patients are going, Tom, I thought you were dead, and he's yep, going, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's annoyed, he gets in the car. He gets out there, right. and he sees a poster up on the side of the road right. for Mission Impossible 8. It's a, I don't know, it's finished. I thought he died while they were filming It's not it. finished. But now, these days, he's shouting about films before they're made. <laughs> okay, it's right. like Lord really? of the Rings, isn't it? Yeah, they're going, Lord of the Rings is in the making. And they're wow. going, brilliant, and all the hype well, and everything. they put a poster up, even <laughs> after... Seems yeah. premature. No, the poster yeah. was already up. That yeah, seems premature, up. given that yeah, a man died he... during the production. It doesn't yeah. matter. I'd have, no. popped, I'd have taken the posters down, no, but then all... I don't work in Hollywood. <laughs> right. So the poster's up there, and he sees it as he's right. in the car driving past. Yeah. And he thinks, that can't, that can't be finished. Doesn't make sense, yeah. They both look at each other. This is your chance. You want it to be an actor. This is the chance. Yeah, right. Go back to the studio. So he goes in, hello, you don't know me. And they go, oh, we think we do. And they go, no, you don't. I'm Brian. Tom right. died on your film set. Well, presume. they must know that. They must know <laughs> Tom that Tom Cruise, Cruise is dead. <laughs> because his family must have been All right, if, if you want to, it makes no difference. We can tweak the script. Right. <laughs> You have, because before he was a plumber, by the way. <laughs> it was a plumber who was turning up going, I'm going to finish Mission Impossible 8. So that was the best. I much prefer that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> and and uh, I can sort out your lavatory. You get, you get the idea. <laughs> right, no, no, we don't get the idea. So this is, Brian has turned up looking like Tom Cruise. He said the film company, right, who must know that Tom Cruise died on their film set. What were they gonna do? When they they would have had po- to wrap it up. They would have well, had no, to what? say- You said they put the, the posters are up. <laughs> yes, the posters are up before they'd even finished So they're cancelling the film until he walks Basically, in. Basically, yeah. Oh, so they are cancelling the film. They're cancelling it. Okay, so, um, we're afraid that, um, uh, production has stopped on Mr. Bustle, uh, 8 due to the death of Tom Cruise. Hang it's on a stopped. minute. What? I'm Brian. Who the, who's Brian? Oh my god, you look exactly like Tom Cruise. Oh, have they done that thing where they put Brian's brain in Tom Cruise's body? Yeah. Ah, oh, but it's not Tom Cruise, you can't act like him. I'm an, I'm an actor. Yeah, but oh, he was good because he was like one yeah, of the best actors. he's not that good. I never rated him. Yeah, but a lot of people did and he's yeah, got- Yeah, a lot a of people certain... didn't. So right. let me bring in a new audience for you, eh? I but can bring can a bit you... to this. Right. So the audience, so the film people, so just tell me what happens, do they sign up the, 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 the new guy? They but sign is it up, in right? the news? It must be in the news that But Tom are they Cruise pretending died. that it's really Tom no, and they can't Tom survived? That. They can't do that. No. But they're quite unscrupulous, So they've Hollywood told people. the world that Brian is taking over. <laughs> Brian, right, he used to be a plumber, this but it's now- Brian, he has no surname. Brian, he's like the Don Orchard. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Brian, right, is that Brian with a- It's above the title, Brian, in. I bet it's Brian with a Y. Brian with a Y, in, Mission Impossible 8. This won't work, where's Tom Cruise? It's not the same. So this, of course, gives it a boost. 
because right. um, well, the flagging see, franchise has been rejuvenated. Right. The, the yeah. press, the news that's yeah. out there. Yeah. Tom Cruise and his new film. Well, it's not Tom Cruise. They can't say that. Well, it is though. When you look at him, you go, "Oh, it's Tom Cruise." Well, no, you got to say a bloke that looks like Tom Cruise. The body of Tom new... Cruise. Yeah. The acting of his kill Brian. <laughs> <laughs> in a new movie Mission Impossible 8 starring <laughs> the bones and skin and stuff of Tom Cruise with Brian's Bride oh, do it. you like the, you like do you like Tom Cruise's face but not his acting and you'll enjoy Mission Impossible 8 I can't be oh, Mission Impossible 8 <laughs> from the people who brought you the first seven and the hair of the bloke who was in the first seven <laughs> but with Brian doing all the lights <laughs> it's, okay, so it's some kind I've never heard of of not the seventh sequel no wait sorry I really want to hear the ending of this story movie please let right. me ask questions you've had, you had your chance to ask your questions <sighs> Right. So where are we? In a sort of 90 minute running time of a movie, where are we now in the film? Are we about two thirds oh, of the way through? We're close, we're close to the end. Okay. So Mission Impossible 8 has been made, so what's the end of our movie? Not of Mission Impossible 8, but the movie you're making. What's mm. the ending there? Um, Do we ever get to see him in Mission Impossible 8? Yeah, but I think what happens is, mm. um, he becomes the person who he never liked. Right. And it's, it's, I just want to get across the moral that, who are we? Are we the, the people in our body or the people we look like? Mm. What's important in life? Mm. Is it the way you look or the way you think? And he, be, he changes because he looks like Tom Cruise, he becomes the man he never liked. But you see, to me, just from the mm. outsider's point of view, it, even if I was to accept all the other premise of this movie, which is clearly horseshit, <laughs> what would have been more interesting is that they don't tell the world that it's a new guy, that they tell the world it's Tom and that they've brought him back to life. Yeah, hey, love that. That seems more interesting it, because it then dropped, dropped there's the tension, they're lying to the world, and this guy, he want, he's getting the glory that he mm. always wanted as an actor, but he's lying, and that's mm. a more interesting tension. Is he going to yeah. declare, actually, I'm not really Tom, I'm Brian, I've been lying to you all, and it, that seems like a more interesting dilemma. Instead, you've got, we've brought back the walking corpse of Tom Cruise <laughs> with another man's mind. I mean, but I think if the whole world's accepting of that. <laughs> yeah. No, but you yeah. do want to see that. I think you. I think a lot of people would just want to see it for that morbid factor of, my God. Yeah, but you're saying, but this is, you mean they want to see your film because of this morbid factor? Yeah, this is a fiction. This is a fiction. This didn't really happen. You mean the final act of the film is us seeing Mission Impossible 8, <laughs> starring the real Tom Cruise playing just his own cadaver, and, I mean, it's an Oscar-winning performance from Tom. I don't know how he's keeping in check who, who he is. <laughs> oh, oh. Oh, what's his girlfriend think of this? Who's? Brian's. She's loving it, isn't she? Because it's, it's, she always liked Tom Cruise. She's over What did Brian look like? Just out of interest. He's just sort of, um, sort of an older looking. Well, who would play him? Who would play him in this film? Probably. This has got to be American. I'm not that. Pro um, what's his name? The bloke who was in Cheers, probably. Ted Danson. Ted Danson. Ted Danson. So Ted Danson <laughs> is Brian. So Claire, <laughs> right? <laughs> this is so confusing because Ted Danson's supposed to be someone that we've never heard of, even though he's Ted Danson, and Tom Cruise is playing himself, the famous actor Tom Cruise, who is now inhabited Ted by Ted Danson, who's Ted not Danson. Ted Danson. <laughs> Ted Danson. Ted Danson as Brian. <laughs> Ted Danson as Brian. As Tom Cruise as and Ethan Hunt in Mission Impossible 8. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So, have you got a title yet? No. No, I just wanted to know if you're in. Surely the wife of Brian. <laughs> the wife of Brian. Who's played Claire? Uh, I, well, I'm, I'm, I'm up for you, you know, that's why I've come to you. I thought you'd be a suggestion. Okay, so, Rebecca okay. De Mornay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> she is so hot after the love of a brain or whatever it was called. <laughs> you want to go where everybody knows your name is Brian. <laughs> well, that's about it for this um, special free guide to, in aid of Red Nose Day, comic relief. 
if you have enjoyed this, or even if you haven't, please make a contribution, big or small, to Comic Relief. You can visit rednoseday.com to do that. We'd appreciate it. Little Richard Curtis would appreciate it. Mm. He's definitely going to get an OBE at some definitely point, if not no. a knighthood. Yeah. Give him both. Carl, look at it this way. Supposing people come to this, they haven't, they don't, they didn't like The Office, Extras, me, Steve, Idiot Abroad, The Ricky Gervais Show, didn't like any of that, but they thought, hold on, they're doing something for charity, I'll check this out. They've had a whale of a time, they've laughed at everything, they're gonna go and buy all the guides still available on iTunes now. That, that is shameless. <laughs> <laughs> also, I'm doing a live stand-up comedy tour at the end of the year. You can check out the details on rickygervais.com. <laughs> Ah, oh, just do something for charity, or not. It's up to you. So it's goodbye from me, Ricky Gervais, and thank you. Goodbye from Stephen Merchant. Goodbye. And from the little round-headed buffoon that is Carl Pilkington, it's a goodbye. Alright. I remember, um, when I went off to, uh, university, um, uh, my brother-in-law dropped me off, my mum came up with me, and she was leaving, and she was sort of crying in the- and I was making up, I was- I was pretending to be really sort of sad and whining about that, right? and then, I thought, oh, I better, I better call her up. She said, call me, right? So I think I waited to the following Sunday. It'd been about a week, right? And I called her up, and um, I couldn't just call her up. I suppose it had to be ironic because I was probably embarrassed about calling my mum. Like I wanted to speak to her too. So I went, I just called her up, and do you remember? She went, hello. I went, mum. She went, well, yeah. I went, it's Ricky. She went, what's the matter? I said. I think I'm blind. <laughs> she went, what? I went, no, nah, how's it going? She went, you silly bleeder, I nearly had a heart attack. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> so if you want to spice up calls to your mum, pretend you've had a terrible accident and that you're blind. <laughs> I like it when I phone my gran, and the only other people that ever phone my gran is me, my sister, or my parents. No one else ever calls. And every time she picks up, she goes, Hello? Like, it could be a monster that's gonna come through the phone line. But also, it's like she's now, she, like, each time she hears it ring, it surprises her. Like, there's a noise in the house, and she f wanders around, she finds an object that's ringing. <laughs> and she doesn't know what it is, and she sort of hits buttons and tells yeah. her, Hello? Well, she's tried three already. And, but what annoys me is she'll, I'll say, Hello, Gran, and she'll go, Who's that? Oh, come on! <laughs> You must recognise me by now. I'm the only person who calls except about three other people. <laughs> I'm not the girl. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and my granddad, who's, she's had this for years. It's not just that she gets up. She, she, she'll, <laughs> she'll go through all of the family's name until she gets to oh, me. Oh, my used to do that. My uh, used to do so that, So she knows yeah. it's me, but she'll go, Hello, Ron, uh, Elaine, uh, Alex, uh, yeah, Steve. Yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh. But it's the same with each member of them, whoever, whichever one of us she's talking to. Oh, it's the, you know, yeah. Love. Yeah. Oh dear. So you've spoken to your mum and dad, you've changed the tiles, you've had lunch, the telly's not on. Suzanne comes in, you've made her dinner? No. Right. What happens there? Now what happens there? What time does she get in? You've done uh, you've done all this by about four or five, have you? About well I'm I'm tidying up and I normally keep my eye on the clock. Mm. Uh I'd like to road. give myself like forty odd minutes to clean up. Right. Kitchen's all clean ready for us to make the tea. Ready okay. for her to make the tea, even though you've been- I know you've been tiling, but that was a sort of- that was a job you gave yourself, you didn't have to do it. Mm. No, but I don't do cooking. She knows that. This- this isn't even a discussion. Right. She knows. Like today, I've got to get some thin chips. So I'll do that. You mean fries? Yeah. Okay. Well, it's frozen- frozen in the bag yeah. or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I've got to get some of them. And what yeah. are you having? What are you having tonight? Uh, scampi. So, as a, that- that shop bought scampi, just- f what do you do? Just- but, uh, I don't know, she just deep fry it. I don't know. I think it's just chuck it in the oven. Yeah. Yeah. So she'll do all that. I'll eat it. And sorry, don't we just rewind for a second. I'll so eat it. <laughs> He's listening in his day's work. I'll eat it. Uh, I say, I've eaten that. She goes, Thank you. You go, oven. Um do you ask how her day's been? I'm just interested when she comes in, you Definitely know, not. she's had a Definitely busy day. Not. She's well like, let me l listen, don't jump to conclusions, Rick, all right? <laughs> Okay, so she let's comes just, in. Let's, let, okay, let's act it out. Yeah. Okay, you've just cleaned up, right? The last bit there, you look back. Them tiles look good. You look at the clock. Oh, what time is it? She usually comes through the door. Well, uh, don't know. It can it can change. She calls and warns me. Right. Uh, let's so go through. Take me through. Okay. The end of the day. Right. Uh, vacuuming up, cleaning up all the mess. Mm. 
Uh, oh, phone's going. Who's that? Suzanne. All right. Yeah, coming home. All right then. See you in a bit. She'll go. I'll. Uh, I I'll put the kettle on. I'll at least fill it. Ready. Because mm. she normally calls again. <laughs> And, what do you mean? Uh, she calls again? What? She calls again when she's out the tube. Let's do it, let's hear it. What's going on? Alright, you're out the tube. Yeah, do you want a cup of tea? Yeah. Alright, see you in a minute. Uh, flick the kettle on. Get the tea bags out. Make a cup of tea. <laughs> milk? Bit of milk. Um, you, 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 sometimes I'll say I'll get us a little treat when you come out the tube. Yeah. Um, so she'll get me, you know, a bounty or something to go with a cup of tea. Alright. She'll come it's in. It's tea though, isn't it? Yeah, but it's going to be another 40 odd minutes. So you have a bounty before you have a meal? Not every day, just sometimes. If I fancy, if I need, if I've got a sugar low, I've yeah. got a touch of diabetes. No, you haven't. I have. I feel like a bit shaky. Oh, sometimes. so you just made that up. So yeah. you did, you have got no evidence whether you've got diabetes. Well, I haven't got evidence of it, but I think no, I have. So there's no evidence, but let's believe in it anyway. Right, well, I have a bounty that normally sorts it out. To me, that's a sign of diabetes. <laughs> Otherwise, what's wrong with me? So, um You're just a greedy fucker. No, I'm telling you, I sometimes need it. I get a proper urge for a Mars bar. I go, I've, I've got to have what one now. What do you have a bounty for, then? No, just to mix it up, because I get sick of Mars bars. Do you? Yeah. Well, when you, have a, when, you or, when you say get me a bounty, have you got an urge for a bounty, then, or a Mars bar? Um well, it's just that they're both quite equal in sugar content. Yeah. But Bounties, there's a lot of that Do you coconut. specify, then, when you say get me a treat, she says, well, well, what? Sometimes I don't, you have a Mars bar, sometimes you have a bounty. No, that's, that's enough for me. I'll go, I'll, when, when she comes in, it's a talking topic, isn't it? What have you got me? Topic? <laughs> It sometimes gets you a topic. You know, it's, it's, it's something to chat about, isn't it? Right, okay. It's something to chat about. So, uh, has there ever been a time... Sorry, I've just got to get this straight, Steve. Sorry, Rick, I just wanted to say... Could, could you imagine you and I having a conversation about what chocolate bar you've ever brought me? <laughs> what did you get me, Rick? I've uh, got your bounty, is that all Thanks, right? Thanks, mate. That's as long as that conversation can possibly yeah, go. You're talking it. about it as a talking point. Yeah, so what happens? So what, what's the last time there was a discussion about what she bought you? Did she ever bring you a bounty and you go, Oh, I was really hoping for a Mars bar. Um, I think the last time she got a bounty, I sort of said, oh, they do a three-pack now. Do you know how they <laughs> just have two bars? They do a three-one. Right, what did she say? She said, did he? Did he <laughs> she said, I want out of this relationship. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that's how a chat starts, and they'll go, yeah, that's why there's fatter people now. Everything's in bigger amounts, isn't it? It used to just be one, like a Milky Way. Now you can get a three-pack, and then they're saying, oh, there's fat people. Because that's the thing. She's, she's sort of been talking to people all day. I've been tiling. Listening to the radio, hearing reports of obesity, so this is a chance for me to tell her what I've learned in a way. Right. So I'll empty. What I bet I've she learned. loves coming through that door. When she comes through, take a coat off. I'll go. Oh. She'll go. What are we having scampi still, or have you gone off the idea? And then I'll go. Oh, you know, we should get them tablets. My mum's been talking about. She goes, what tablets? I go the food. So see how it's all coming together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's like that, and that's. That's what does she you. say to the idea of now living on tablets instead of um, having some scampi and chips when she comes home after a hard day's work? What does she, she just say to that? She sort of goes, oh, right. Mm. <laughs> she says, oh, right. Yeah. So, so, this important information which you're imparting that you've gotten during the day, her response to that is, oh, right. Yeah. So, and then I'll just, I'll get her attention at some point, I'll say there's worms with teeth. <laughs> Oh, I say I'm going to bring out the good big guns now. I imagine. Right, all right, she's ignoring me. Okay, wait for this. Wait, wait. Suzanne, I see you. You're ignoring me. Yeah. Worms with teeth. <laughs> oh God! Amazing. Oh, God. So, what does she say to worms have teeth? Uh, I can't remember. She just Did sort of said, "Oh, have you got the facts right?" I said, "Yeah." <coughs> that's that's kind of it. And she'll either go, "All right," or she'll. Uh, I mean, it's pretty rare that it's anything more than that. <laughs> So it's not a conversation, really. It's, no, because the response <laughs> twice now has been, "Oh, right, right." So, <laughs> so, so she's she's looking forward to some scampi and chips. She hands over your bounty. You go, "Oh, and they do three, yeah, whatever." Right? What happens next? Take us through. I'll sort of say you got anything to report, anything gone on today, mm -hmm. and she knows it's it's. I sort of phase off again. It's like a phone call. She'll go, "Oh, so and so's." leaving or whatever and I don't know these people mm. and I'm not that interested. Mm. And she senses that? Yeah. Yep. Um, so she'll go, oh have you paid the insurance? I go, no I forgot. She goes, <laughs> I've told you to do that. I said, yeah but I've been doing the tiling. She's going, yeah but you didn't, weren't meant to do the tiling. I asked you to sort the insurance out on the washer because the washer keeps breaking. Um, 
and she won't let me fix it, even though I know what it was. It was a heating element. I said, I know, I know how to fix that. But she was going, no, I don't want you messing with it, because if you flood the kitchen out, it's, you know, makes a mess. So anyway, so I've got to sort that out. I still haven't done it. I should have done that today. Uh, then have a game of crib. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God! Oh, it's God! It's like being in an old people's home. I know. But I'll tell you what, put the telly on, because there's some flump fun there that might <laughs> might give you an insight. No. No? No, not until... Uh, like I've said to you before, unless she knows what she's putting it on for, mm. it doesn't go on. Right. None of this flicking. So it when on. she says, let's put the telly on, you go, okay, Suzanne, what are we going to watch? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, what... And, what? She, and she goes... And she goes, well, I don't know, should we have a look what's on? I say, look what's on first. But have you got a Radio Times or a TV? Yeah, I've got, a, like, a magazine that comes with a paper at the weekend. Okay. Look through that. If there's anything on your fancy, we'll look at it. If not, we don't need it on. Put the radio on. Right. And then she has a look and she'll go, the apprentice is on. I'll go, okay. You can have it on. Right. Uh, if she goes, oh, this, I can't remember a time when I've said, no, you're not having that on. Um, you're quite patriarchal, aren't you, wouldn't you say? What do you mean? Well, well that the man of the house rules the roost. Yeah, you pretty not much really. lay the rules down, don't you? They, no, because she down. still does what she wants. Even though I'm saying you're clumping about again, making a racket, she does it more. But it works, doesn't it? Yeah, sounds like it. And um, so you've, you've had a lovely game of crib with Suzanne, because you know the magic's still there. And uh, what time do you hit the sack? Don't know about eleven. Do you go to bed at the same time? Yeah. So that's it. Yeah, that's so, the day. Really. Well, hang on, we haven't finished yet. So, y any conversation before bed? Uh, depends if the radio is on. I might say, look, here's that story about the worm. Yeah. Mm. And then she'll go, yeah, but look, it hasn't got teeth. It said this, that and the other, and I'll go, oh, yeah, yeah forgot. Good night. That's the end of that. Really. Another day closer to death. Well, that was a, a free podcast. Um, I suppose we'd call that a day in the life of Carl Pilkington. That's a little thank you to all the fans who bought the audio books. <laughs> it's not much of a gift, is it? Wow, it's something, isn't it? I mean, I know Carl did it begrudgingly, but thank you for downloading the audio books all these years. Carl's very grateful, really. It means he can go and buy as much grout in as he'll ever need. Um, and thank you to people who've uh, bought the book, An Idiot Abroad, and uh, watched the programme. If you, you still can't get enough, Carl, the DVD in Idiot Abroad is out. That's a lovely Christmas gift for all the family. All of that now at Amazon.co.uk or Calm or yeah, HMV or Yeah, or your retailer of choice. Your retailer, hey, retailer of, choice. of choice. I'll go out, go out and buy it. Go yeah, out get off walk. your arse and buy it. Go out for a walk and buy an Idiot Abroad on DVD and the book. And what a lovely Christmas gift the Ricky Gervais show would make as well on DVD. Animated ramblings from the round-headed moron. Some people don't even realise that the Idiot Abroad is Carl Pilkington from the Ricky Gervais show. If you're on Twitter and Facebook and MySpace and or if you've got just friends you actually talk to via the mouth, <laughs> then tell them if they enjoyed an idiot abroad to get the Ricky Gervais show on audiobook or DVD. And while you're at it, buy my new stand up on DVD, Science. No, I don't know. I don't know, Rick. That mm. seems a shameless plug. Yeah. Well, what was all what was all the other shit then? Yeah, that was just talking to the fans. That's because you get a third of all the other stuff. All right, let's not talk. Let's not reduce it to money. Hmm. Carl's on it. On what? On the uh, science DVD. I've done a special program where I interview him for science, which is amazing. Um, but my favourite bit is probably when uh, he meets Warwick Davis. His little I stitched him right up. He thought he was going to have a talk about science. We hid Warwick. Right? Well, it that's was not hard, is it? <laughs> <laughs> we had to keep in a different room, and then Carl sat down, just thought he was talking about science, and I went, got a little fella, and Warwick walks out, and your little face, and Warwick confronted him over some of the uh, words he's used. Midget. Yes, I remember the famous uh, midget mm. hippotam hippopotamus story. Yeah. I'm sure you used the word midget there far too many times. Yeah. So there's a few things to buy at Christmas. Go out and buy one of our DVDs or books. This was free. Now pay for something. <laughs>